Hi everybody. Today we are going to work on refining some of the forms that we've made. Um, I'd like to show you how to use a number of the different tools that I've gotten out and you may have available to you. Some of these you can find in the hardware store, some you maybe can find at home. Um, I showed you how to make this wire wrap loop tool in a separate video. So by the end of this video, you'll learn to use your wire wrap loop tool to shave wall thickness down and then we'll smooth those walls using a red plastic rib. You will also use your fettling knife to cut a lip edge and facet the walls as well as make a hand cut foot. We'll use some found and repurposed tools to carve and add texture to the surfaces. I'll show you how to apply slip. And finally, we'll clean up the pressed textures on any of your fingerprint pinch pots and round the lip edges with a chamois. So I'm going to start out with this shallow bowl shape and I've got a wire wrapped loop tool. And what I'm going to do here is just drag this along the interior. I'm pushing down pretty hard and you can see it's aggressively changing that interior surface. What this tool is really good at, number one, is taking a predictable amount of clay each time you pull it across the surface. Number two, it will also knock down the peaks and bring them to the level of the valleys of your pinch marks. This is the first step in getting this interior surface to be smooth and consistent in its curve. You can see it's a fairly aggressive tool and one of the things that's nice about it is that if you miss a spot you can easily see it because it will still have a smooth texture. So I'm almost done with my first pass through on here. You'll have to play around with varying the pressure of this tool as you're working at home to sort of find out what works for the um, stiffness of the clay that you have. So here's my initial pass through. You can see it's pretty rough. There's maybe one little spot there that I didn't quite touch yet. But all in all, I'd say this is getting pretty smooth. So from here, I'm going to spray the interior of the surface a little bit. Not trying to saturate it, but trying to add just a little bit of moisture. Then you can try a um, silicon spatula if you have one of those nearby. Um, or I'm using one of these Mud Tools plastic ribs. The red ones are the softest and they will conform to this shape the easiest. And that spray that I just did is going to allow me to blend all those texture points into a smooth surface without putting very much pressure on the shape of the object. The tricky thing about this tool is trying not to gouge the clay when it first touches. So we've got a very smooth surface here. This particular knife was salvaged from my silverware drawer and all I'm going to do is simply drag it around my edge here. You could try and do it in one continuous cut or you can make many short cuts as I'm doing. Either way, try to avoid unnecessary cuts. What you don't want to do is like kind of jerk it along um, because you'll get a an edge that looks tenuous. I can tell that the clay is at the right point for me to be doing this activity because when I'm cutting I'm getting a really clean edge here. If it's too wet that edge will sort of curl over and you'll have a, a burr there that will need a lot of cleaning up. Um, if you feel that this edge is too sharp for the intended purpose of this bowl you can get a fingertip wet and just run it around along that corner and that will soften it just a little bit while still giving you a clean break between the plane on the interior and the exterior. So faceting is something you can do with any kind of knife. Um, I find the shorter the better and what it's going to do is create these flat plates on the surface of the pot. Um, the trick to this is to move the knife relatively quickly. You don't want to 
That's not working. So this clay is a little bit hard to be doing this. It's a stiff leather hard. Works a little bit easier when it's somewhat softer. Um, although you don't want to have those choppy marks if you're really kind of working your way through it slowly. Okay, so it's basic faceting. You can also do things like push the knife in and lift it out if you want to create a broken edge. If you wanted to, you could also add a foot ring. And for this, you're going to want to have some sort of a turntable just so you can make a, a round shape. So I'm drawing a circle where I'll start to remove some clay. And then what I'm going to do is hold the knife tip into that foot. So I've cut down and next I'm going to push the knife in at a shallow angle and go around trying to meet the tip of the knife with that first cut that I made. Okay. So I've created a recessed foot by doing that. This area here is still flush with the foot. And so I want to knock that down a little bit. This pinch pot doesn't have a ton of clay here to work with. So I'm going to be somewhat restrained with the amount that I remove from this interior space. If you know that you'd like to do this particular technique, when you're pinching, you can leave extra clay there in the bottom of your floor of your pot so that you have a little bit more to work with. Um, this kind of a foot ring is, is really, really nice if you can glaze this interior surface. <laughs> if you wanted to then go around and create a similar recess here, um, I'm going to freehand this, but I'm carving that same downward line just eyeballing the width of the foot ring that I'm trying to create. And then I'll go ahead and push the knife in from the side. Notice the angle is upward this time. This has a slight upward curve on both edges of the foot ring. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is get that wet and smooth it down a little bit. If you don't do that, it will scratch the surfaces that you set it on. So I've given this bowl a foot. Okay, on the back side of this bowl, I'm going to show you some carving techniques that you can do um, with a variety of different tools uh, just to add texture or visual interest. I probably wouldn't use all of the ones I'm going to show you on a single piece. Um, first, if you have any wood carving tools around, um, you can use those. This is a V-shaped tool. Um, again, it's meant for carving wood, so the first time I used this, it was very, very sharp. Um, as soon as you start using it on clay, it's going to get rather dull quickly. This is a push tool, which means you're going to push the tool away from you. Important to remember not to have your finger bracing the clay on the other side when you're using this kind of a tool. You can see the clay here is cutting quite nicely. No burred edges. Most of that will just clean right off. Um, this will work really well with glazes that tend to break over edges, meaning they change colors when they go over a sharp corner. This is also a really good technique to use if you have a particularly thick wall. Um, I'm sort of wishing I had cut this edge after I did this, so I might recut that just to kind of get a nice clean edge where those carved textures meet. Another one you could try just to sort of fill space, I'm going to try a screwdriver tip here. I'm holding it at an angle and pressing it in and it's giving me 
kind of an arrow shape. Any texture tool is going to become interesting if you use it with enough repetitions. So really be creative as you're searching around for things to make texture with. And don't be shy to try things out. Even if you try this tool in a different way, you can make a number of plus signs. You could try something as mundane as this um, hook holder. Lots of different ways you can go with it. You can see from the textures I was doing on the other side, I'm creating a pebbly texture on the interior. The glaze will run around shapes as subtle as that, so you could try to do some of that on purpose um, to create some visual interest on the interior of your pots. These two pots are a little too dry for a normal slip, but they will work well, I think, if we water it down just a little bit. So I'll try that out next. This stuff is actually scoopable. Because slip is just clay, you can paint it on the bottom. Um, additionally, I am using a wet slip to have fewer brush strokes, and I like to spray it lightly with a water bottle at the end to reduce that as well. So I'm leaving the fingerprint surface here. One thing that I did do to the top edge, though, is you want to soften that up a little bit. The corners, you don't want any jagged corners or sharp edges there. Um, additionally, on the bottom, you want to pat this down just so that it's slightly concave. Um, that way, when it's done, this outer edge will be what contacts your table or floor um, instead of the middle. So to round this edge, what I used was just a piece of chamois. So this is really, really thin, supple leather. It usually comes in a much bigger sheet. Um, it also works really well, this small strip of it for rounding off edges on pots. So even this one that I've um, sharpened a good deal, I'm just gonna get this wet, the chamois, let it soak in, and then I'll run it around that edge. And I've got my two fingers on either side, and the lip will fit between those two fingers. Sorry, this is a weird angle, but I want you to see where I'm pressing on those corners. And by doing that, I can soften those edges substantially. If you want a smooth lip, this is definitely the way to do it. You could also try a piece of plastic. What you don't want to use, though, is a sponge, um, unless you're using a clay that does not have any grog, like the bee clay or porcelain. For stoneware clays, if you use a sponge, it's going to remove all the fine particles of clay on the surface, and the, this edge will be gritty and sandy because the grog the um, toothy um, particles in the clay will come to the surface. You can see how it's rounded over compared to where it was just cut. 